everybody! Welcome to Foley Fables with me. Foley, I guess that makes sense. To work on that intro. Anyway, we're back to Stasis Bone Totem. Uh, previously on Stasis Bone Totem, we are Mac, uh, Charlie, and Moses. We have found our way to a derelict oil rig out in the ocean. Ostensibly, we were there to uh, strip it for parts, uh, claim it as salvage and so on, and kind of sell it off piece by piece, um, as it appeared to have been abandoned and was up for first come first serve, effectively. Uh, when we got there, though, it transpired that uh, actually it's not an oil rig at all. It doesn't function as an oil rig. There's no oil being drilled here. It is, in fact, a cover for some sort of undersea, deep sea um, corporate research base and they have been researching uh horrible horrible shit down here uh some cthulhu things are going on but then there's also some sort of genetic experimentation um cross hybridizing of people and stuff like that it's all in general pretty disgusting stuff going on here uh we made our way to the bottom and very much to the bottom we're twenty thousand leagues under the sea basically at the bottom of the ocean. We are, in fact, at the bottom of the ocean. Um, and in our attempts to sort of figure out what's going on and get ourselves back up to the top of the oil rig so we can just get the fuck out of here, because everything is pretty horrible, um, we accidentally restarted a self-destruct sequence that uh, the people who were living here, and have died quite some time since, had managed to pause corporation involved, the Kane Corp, had uh, set off the self-destruct. Somebody local had managed to pause it, uh, and effectively the whole station had been in limbo up until that point. Uh, our attempts to sort of get things restarted restarted also the self-destruct sequence, so the oil rig at the top is now gone. Uh, we are very much stranded here at the bottom of the ocean. Uh, so our last ditch effort now is we're all trying to meet up again, and there is potentially a rover that still works and we're all kind of making our way there. So a lot of this game has seen the three party members split up a lot. Uh, we are somewhat reconvening now in the same place, and I imagine something will transpire to split us up again because that tends to be how the game works. So Mac has made his way to the very bottom of this um, excavation site that looks like an under undersea temple, but there are um, there's evidence that the temple itself uh, was not always under the sea. Uh, Charlie has managed to escape um, into a docking area down at the bottom as well. Uh, her diving suit was starting to lose energy and lose power, so she's managed to survive that and get herself back inside the base. Uh, and Moses, our friendly teddy bear slash sentient AI, is making his way to... I don't remember, some kind of resource center, some sort of stock or warehouse kind of thing, I think. He's in a pneumatic tube, effectively, which the two human party members could not, couldn't possibly survive. Moses being somewhat of a robot, uh, can. So he's doing that in an attempt to locate the rover, at least. So that's where we're going to pick back up. Hopefully, assuming I, I saved in the correct place. Otherwise, we'll be doing a lot of whatever we did at the last street. Just check all of our audio is all working. Yes, I definitely need to need to check that after I gave the rundown of what we had just done. Okay. All right. A torrent of displaced water careens into the great orifice, carrying with it a cloud of foam and explosive spray. We're very zoomed in. Can we zoom out a little bit? I've got a PDA here. Take a look. Uh, I think this is a photo of us. So that's not good. It shouldn't be here. Okay. 
Kaito Yamada, Pharmaceuticals, Personal Log. So, I've arrived, predictably seasick, at this mausoleum of science. Doing this for her. Personal Log, I knew it! She's here! I found my Mila. Mila, possibly. I need to talk to her and explain where I've been. Her mother left, ran, changed her name, changed both their faces, changed everything. Classified message to the Shoka board. Lazagan's research is astounding. His crude combination of PS-139 and minute quantities of recreational drugs may be the unconventional solution to the Brigo problem. Unfortunately, he is also deranged, so I removed him from the project. I suspect he is doing extracurricular research as he seems very comfortable with the stasis products. He made numerous threats, but I do not believe he will be a problem moving forward. Oh, well, Yamada, boy, have you miscalculated that one. He refuses to reveal how we obtained the PS-139, indicating a containment leak. I've ordered him to remain in his quarters for now. Hopefully his mental state will improve with time and rest. It does not. Spoilers. Spoilers, he decides to release this horrible mushroom growth into the rest of the compound, and it gradually takes over the place. Personal log. I have conjured Mila in my mind so often. Thoughts of her have displaced actual recollections. Perhaps it's unhealthy, but I don't remember how to live any other way. Classified message, priority command blast. Bazigan disappeared after disabling the decontamination system and releasing an aerosolized version of his PS-139 cocktail into the ventilation. Remember, remember when you said he would be fine? Oh well. Some crew are experiencing hallucinations and other mental disturbances. I recommend that an external security ops team be sent in to contain the situation and find Bazigan. We need to lock this facility down now. And, well, they did. And they killed everybody. That's why I'd message the joke aboard. The situation aboard the mule is unsalvageable. A clean order has been given. Return to DS-15 immediately for evacuation. Classified message, priority command blast. Data purged and uploaded to Kane Luna and crew confined to Omega site. Picking up a valuable intelligence asset and then returning topside. Site termination in three hours. Please wait for me. Repeat. Please wait for me. Personal log. Come what may, I must get to her. Personal log. I hear gunfire and screams. Trigger happy security assholes. Personal log. Kane's reign. Omega is cut off from the mule. They've sealed the temple door. Christ, Cain, Muhammad, forgive me. But I've left this place, but I chose to play the noble father. Personal log. I found her. The log. How long has it been? A month? Two? I hope do we have. Personal log. Mila grows weaker by the day. The infection is taking her. There doesn't seem to be a logic to who succumbs first, but we all will eventually. There is no escape. We are cut off. No rations left. Personal log. Their machines rattle all day and night, grinding the bones. Cool. Personal log. Idiots! They genuinely believe they're not already infected as God himself for protecting them. They are doomed, just like us. Watching them lose their nerve when we went down to the well was good. Personal log. I will stay with Mila to the very end. Personal log. They came, those hungry eyes. They came and butchered so many, held them down, let them scream, and slowly, lovingly removed their spines, their heads, and honor. Personal log. No more food, no, for, no more fresh water. Log. Hard to distinguish between the invading memories and reality now. Images remain, traced over by vision. Sounds ring in my ears, can't stop them. Something was calling to me from the dark, pulling me forward, begging me for help. The end of days. Don't know, don't want to go. Want to stay with Mila. Why do I have to go? Where is Mila? Have to get her more meat. Close now, we move to the wheelhouse. My body feels strong, even as my mind fades. Lucid moments are becoming rare. Instead, I feel another presence in my head, willing me to go deeper into the shadows to help with an unknown purpose of world-saving proportions. Personal log. Soon I will disappear completely, and they will take Mila. They will not take me. I am spoiled meat. Personal log. So I've arrived. Predictably... Oh, no. That's at the beginning. Okay. So he had a good time. spray, minuscule insects scurry over and into the mud, snatching up and feeding on morsels vomited out from the spray. Not a locking mechanism has engaged, stopping the pod from descending further. However, in the process, extreme friction has damaged part of the brake, seizing it up. Okay, in that case we might be able to remove some of those. Brakes are seized up. If I open it... The pod plummets like a rock. Mac, that would not be a good idea. Great input. Thanks, Moses. What if I just do it, though? With a laugh, like... I can't. <laughs> it won't let me. Okay. Do we have anything to work with? That's our microphone. That's not gonna help. Right. 
I'll go back to this one later. It was a path forward somewhere. There it is. Oh, I'm very zoomed out now. Zoom in a bit. Okay. Bones. Inside the stone porch lies an avalanche of bone. An Ossian tide slowly floating down a winding stairwell, blocking any means of traversal. So many bones, it is actually blocking the path forward. That's impressive. What is that? Person? If they look like, uh, giant water wheels? Emphasis on giant. One's not spinning, though. The source of your problem. The excess water blocks the tunnel for your descent. You will need to get the wheel moving in order to proceed. And fix the brakes. Someday something's gonna go my way in this place. I would not count on it. <laughs> gonna talk about this giant statue, no? The nude statue lounges, adorned in resplendent ornamentation, wistfully gazing into the darkness of the cave-bound lagoon. As one does. Parapets. Crumbled triangular parapets hold aged granite lanterns within stacked alcoves, dribbling ancient discolored wax down over the stonework. Alright, so that will take us into the parapet. Can I go this way, or do I get washed away if I try? No. He doesn't try to go through the water. He goes the other way. Black sand. Childhood of adventure films warrants that this could be quicksand. That a branch or a snake, this could get very... This will get ugly very quickly and should be avoided. Alright. Avoid the black sand, saw. Water wheel. The yawning gullet imbibes a tide of cascading water, a roaring des desecrendo as frothing seawater tumbles downward. Desecrendo. This thing is ancient, but it's still working. Someone cares for it. That's what worries me. Here. We're not alone, Danya. This will take us into whatever the fuck's going on here. All right, let's have a look. Hard shit is happening here. Sacrifice. The spine has been partially extracted from the flesh hollowed sacrifice. Pulled out like a vivisected toy, loosened flesh sags forward like a refuse bag burdened with curdled excrement. Gross. The discarded viscera and collected ichor erupting with a repugnant stink of wet decay. <sighs> Cain. Charlie, don't look at this. Oh, dear lord. What did I say? They have become... art. Yeah. The bear's right. They're... posed. They were... Cain scientists. No. They were sacrifices. Oh, that's not good. What was that? Varan? I said nothing. I thought I heard. Oh, 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 good. Oh, good. We are infected. Excellent. Dave Gallagher, Internal Ops. He's also somewhat redacted, I guess. It's profile. Greetings, team. For those who don't already know, I'm here to oversee Omega's expansion into and beyond the well. May have heard recent shocking rumors about the fate of the Omega Tech. I can assure you that he was merely exposed to hydrochloric acid from a faulty something or other. Which requires no further explanation, so don't ask for one. That's not really what happened, but okay. There will be no significant changes to your day-to-day -day life. You'll still report to your team leads, whom I'll be meeting with shortly. I will be holding a daily prayer meeting, but I request that only 100 percenters join me. Those with cybernetics or other augmentations need not attend. Look forward to working with you all. Okay. Racist? Classist? Or I don't even know. Tech techist. We moved some equipment into the well complex. The stem repair station should be adequate to keep this lot running correctly. This shit we saw down there boggles the mind. Most people wouldn't believe it, even if we took them with us and clamped their eyelids open. So they had to look. Personal log. I dumped everything into the Android while it was upgrading, even the red line classified data. Three petabytes of research were encrypted and jammed into its foul toaster noggin. Leaf said they would trigger the failsafe data carrier if Corbin couldn't be extracted. Well, that won't be a problem anymore. Spoilers, Corbin could not be extracted. Personal log, my insides are in knots. I feel like I'm going to throw up. Not sure if I'm still adjusting to these insane depths or just nervous. 
trying to avoid checking into med bay, as they would undoubtedly inject me with impurities. Still, if this gets any worse, I may not have a choice. Okay, this guy's gonna die because he's so he's so racist. It's gonna it's actually gonna kill him. Message encrypted to Leaf. The cover might be compromised. I just got back from having my stomach pumped, and the lab is still analyzing the contents. But it's possible that someone poisoned me. I have decided to stay the course, regardless. The cause is too important. But if my messages stop, you will know why. Yellow leaf always. Yellow leaf forever. Uh, as we discovered in the last stream, yellow leaf are somewhat of an anti-cane, anti-corporate uh, resistance type thing. And do keep in mind that cane in this universe, cane uh, corp, is also effectively the church as well. Personal log. Leaf said this operation would be more straightforward if I did a face swap or a neural tap, but I believe in doing things the old-fashioned way. I like a rare Texan bread steak. I only drink rainwater, and I'm exclusively attracted to 100 percenter women. Fucking hate this guy. That is an impressive array of feats for a man living in the 22nd century, implanting the mark of the beast in my very own flesh. Will never happen, not for Leaf, not even for the cause. I spent six years dealing with a loathsome android and even filthier augmented nexus scum humans while slowly working my way into a corporate position. Cain Corp took our hydroponics tech for their interplanetary expansion and then screwed us over by withholding payment until we had to request a buyout. We won't terraform our hunk of rock, Arakoth, and populate it with pure, unadulterated virility in the foreseeable future. Yellowleaf is just a dream again, but in time we will claim our birthright and our domain. Message the, to the Omega Lab crew. Urgent. Stop all excavation immediately. A, contam a contaminant has spread throughout the mule. This is a code black. Return to the Omega Lab. Seal the decon chamber and await further instructions. Message to all mule staff. I'm clean. I haven't been near anyone infected and I don't have any symptoms. Look, I'm wearing a mask. You can't lock me in here with these pestiferous scum. It's a death sentence. I'm corporate, damn it. Open the doors now. Oh yeah, now you're happy to be a, a corporate employee when you can use it to Get out of quarantine. What in the fuck does perdiferous mean? Not perdiferous. Pestiferous. I mean, I can guess, but I'd like to know specifically what I mean. Pestiferous. Harboring infection and disease. Okay. He's very diseased people, is what he's saying, more or less. Personal log. We've been left to die in this temple. Did someone discover why I'm here, and are they protecting Cain by disposing of me? I don't know. But there's been no contact from the outside since they sealed the doors and we're running low on supplies. People are looking to me for guidance, but I don't know what to say anymore. Gandhi, if you're listening, I could use some direction myself. Gandhi? Sleep with underage girls and pretend to be celibate? I think that's all he's got going for you. Anyway, personal log. I snapped Liam's neck after he tried to steal my last energy bar. He was boasting about his vulgar augmentation, so really I did him a favor. Bionic penis? An undelivered message to Leaf. My previous message has failed, but I'm trying one last time, not hoping to receive aid, but because I don't want all of this to have been for nothing, Corbin is trapped down here with me, and while my mind won't survive what's to come, the androids will. This neural core contains everything you need to get Yellow Leaf back on top. Let's hope the failsafe got the data out before the base purge. Yellow Leaf's always Yellow Leaf forever, and that's that for him. The victim's meat and muscles have been aggressively excavated and unspooled. The interior of the carved cavity filled with confetti... With confetti mounds of shredded viscera. They shredded up other meat and stuffed it into him where his muscle used to be. What the fuck is going on here? Flesh frame. Tethered flesh has been wound and woven in between wooden frames like meat-spun dream catchers. Globules of meat matter have trickled down the threads and formed grisly mounds around the base. A meat-based dreamcatcher, you say? Uh, this isn't human. The ribs are broken. Spines removed. Still alive? Obviously something in there. Can I have it? No. Ugh! Well, I got the rib spreader. But I wanted it. I got what it, uh, PDTs are back. Okay, they were kind of an important thing in the first game. We needed them to get around the station. Then it transpired. Uh, some of the creatures in the station had figured that out and started skinning people so that they could carry their PDTs around with them. 
They understood that the skin was required, but didn't understand that it was an implant in the skin that was actually doing the job, so they were just draping other people's skin over their body, and it was, it was pretty horrible. This whole series is pretty horrible. <laughs> Sodden sand sinks deeply from the spilled blood, spiraling clouds of plasma tinting the grains a dark crimson. Empty containers consumed by chaotic events, empty containers of supplies and tools have burst, melted, or simply collapsed. Melted structure. Scorched remains of a former Kane Corporation structure. Inside, blackened and malformed equipment lies under sheets of melted fabric. Deus. Deus? Ritualistic dyes drowns in swirling plasma harvested from the seated sacrifices. A strong metallic taste and coppery odor waft from the malignant and gore-filled congregation. Okay. Be more over here. Fire marked supplies lie abandoned. Natural rock extends upward towards a shade-drowned ceiling left untouched by the masons and builders who shaped the remainder of the cavern. Lloyd floodlights with their bases buried in wet sand illuminate the ritualistic gallery of exorciated violence. A lack of rust and grit suggests these lights are more recent additions to the surface. Blood splatter. Far flung blood splatters speak of an energetic and enthusiastic stripping of flesh. Meaty strips spun and flicked like the brush of an artistic of an artist possessed. Cool. Glad I came over here. Alright, what did I guess? Rib spreader. Well, isn't this a nightmare surgical instrument? Something really morbid about using bones to build something that props open people. Oh, the rib spreader is made of bones. Made of ribs as well. That's, that's pretty fucked up. PDT. I have seen stuff like this before. Some managers like to stick these into staff and keep track of them just in case they think of making a run for it. It acts as some kind of info bridge between the organic and the digital. Okay, let's check. Can I rip this apart? Nope. Unsurprising. Can I rip this part? No. Alright. Mac and his incredible strength is not required. Let's try going in here. The intense glare of a fluorescent light offers a stark contrast in this stale atmosphere. Don't know what I'm looking at. Anti-clockwise, that's all I got going for me here. Okay. Biotech service station. This makeshift station was set up as an on-site fabrication machine, primarily to repair cutting-edge tech. Something tore through here. Ripped this place apart. Anything still working? Checking. Stand by. Charlie, what is this? Surgical stuff? Biotech surgery, yeah. For working on biotech components. Okay, well that looks like it. Data storage navs locked in position. Do, do your thing, machine. Do the thing. Do... Thing? Okay, I guess we need something else for this. Oops, that's not what I meant to do. Well, whatever. Nyum. Nyum. Alright, he's still going. He's still busy making his way to wherever it is he's gone. What I meant to do was take this from him. We used recorded sounds like this to freak out... I think... We used... We used recorded sounds like this to freak out bogeys before we engaged. Good old-fashioned psychological warfare. Makeshift lab. The putrefying smell of decomposition pervades the makeshift Healing labels on the petri dishes indicate that they have been qu quiescent for some time. Quiescent? Silent? Unused? Got our badge, yo. Empty food containers are caked in grime, their original packaging now beyond identification. Doors 
locked. Gotta get through this to get to that wheel mechanism. Doors. Always doors. One after the other. Yeah. Definitely a trend, isn't it? All clamp A3, damage, door mechanism failure. And I jam this in. I jam it in there. Uh -huh. okay, not that. Has anything, so I can't do anything there. Okay, it looks like there's something all the way up in the top left. Let's see if I can get there. Arm crossed figures. The ground vibrates to the shuffling echo of grinding machinery radiating from the entryway above. Looming reliefs hoisted on flanking pillars depict arm crossed figures at rest as if lulled to sleep by the mechanical warbling. Another native. What's left of it? You are getting closer to the heart, brother. Such sights you will grow used to. <laughs> what? Who's on this channel? Mac? What? A new voice. I heard it before. You didn't hear it? No. Nothing. Someone's on our comms. Plug suit doesn't show any new channels. I know what I heard. Dear. Gateway. A steel gateway allows controlled passage through a barbed portal, able to cut off access with evidently murderous speed halved corpse. A malformed carcass of patchwork skin and tumorous growths lies bisected, the lower half distressingly absent. Reams of stringy inner innards slowly slide as <laughs> god slide out from the tear, the laceration discharging a fouled mixture of blood, bile, and digestive matter. It's just, I think it's just the way back. A slew of muddied footprints trails down the passage in a frantic gait. Sealed by cobwebs and dust lies an adorned object made by the open hand of a long gone civilization. Yeah, this looks like something I want to carry around. Well, you don't have a choice, Mac. We're taking it. I'm glad I picked that up. Scepter with blade. The blade's a bit loose. I'm hoping that means this is a shoddy ceremonial tool, unless because it's been busy. If it's loose, I can probably pull it out. This disc is sharp as hell. Use extra caution around sharp objects, Mac. Thanks, Moses. A saw blade. This is not the answer if you need a reliable, sturdy saw blade, but, which comes to shove, I could use it as a throwing weapon. Scepter. An okay club, but this will shatter the moment you hit anything. Yeah, keep going. We've made our way up to a different wheel. Improvised generators capable of running advanced cane devices. The contrast between old and new is jarring. Cane scientists rig the water wheel to charge their batteries. Clever. Uh, they're looking for a Lego block, which I do not have. We'll have to come back with that. Collapse support. The mildewed support has partially collapsed. The glitter of wooden beams now only barely restraining a sagging ceiling. I don't think I can go that way. So I'm trying to go this way. Perpetual grinding tremor betrays the cog power device as a mill. Inside bones snap and crack as they are crushed into mulch. Puffs of bone dust spitting out like venting system. Or like venting steam, rather. Okay. Oh, that's this is probably why I'm being Rocks and dust. No. infected. Bones. They're grinding bones. Sustenance? Not a pleasant thought, is it? They're grinding bones to make their bread. <sighs> B 
Team James Botanist, personal log. Since I got the eidetic memory enhancement, I've been having trouble tracking reality. Thing is, dreams are made up of memories mixed with real emotions and stimuli. My memories are now perfect representations of my waking life, so my dreams feel as real as everything else. I tried using sleep away to avoid dreaming altogether, but it made me lightheaded. Only pain reliably signals when I'm awake, so now I'm going around pinching my arms. I need to find a longer term solution. First log. Excuse me. Personal law. Yellow Leaf paid off most of my family debt, sponsored my education, and ensured an unobstructed career path. Kane's premier research facility this side of Luna. In return, all I need to do is grab some data, like early base plans, very old archive messages, base AI details, etc. Upload it to my eidetic storage, and transfer it once I'm topside. Easy enough, right? Personal log. Data dump is 46% complete. Personal log. While collecting samples at the base of the well, I heard strange noises below, outside the bounds of our current operation. They were rhythmic, almost like low pulsing bellows. It sounded like chanting or blowing distant horns, but I know that's impossible. The cave acoustics must amplify the sound of falling water or circulating air. I'm not sure at this point have they reached this area. Possibly he was just hearing the water wheel. Data dump is 65% complete. Personal log. I'm not supposed to know this, but the security squad brought in to contain the contamin contamination event reported an encounter with some creature in the temple. They opened fire inside the blister. Uh, the blister was a staging area that was set up outside of the excavation. It's effectively where everybody puts their suits on and what have you before they go in. Did I actually hear chanting the other day? Could there be people down here? Seems crazy, but then again, everything that goes on here is nuts. Fortunately, that squad's signal dropped shortly after, so that's all we have for now. Uh, that I know of. So we'll see. Personal log. Data dump is 100% complete. Tomorrow's my last day here. I'm getting the fuck out. And he got hit by lockdown. Didn't we all? Personal log. Lockdown. What are the chances? Uh-huh. Personal log. I don't know how long it's been since they left us down here. A month? Two? I keep pinching myself, but I can't seem to wake up. Flies are running low. Dave Gallagher pulled rank. He says there's more food at the wheelhouse down by the beach. And we have to draw straws for who goes down there. Wish me luck. Personal log. You set us up, you prick. There were never any supplies down here, and you knew it. You just wanted to keep the emergency rations for yourself. Giving you one chance to lower the elevator for us, or when we find a way back up there, I'm gonna make you wish you had. Personal log. I ate part of someone. At least I'm pretty sure I did. I was picturing eating a nice warm steak au Steak au poivre. Oh, what that is. And then, I had flesh in my mouth, and I couldn't stop chewing. The worst part is I didn't mind it. The taste was okay, and I hadn't eaten so long, I just needed something, anything. He was already dead, though. I am not a murderer, but I am a cannibal. He would have wanted this, right? Doubt it. Giving his body to feed us? I imagine he probably would have wanted to escape. It's what any scientist would wish to do. Yes, he, he would have been glad, definitely. Where's the log? Feels like weeks since the locals captured us. The others with me have been moved or or died from starvation, infection. Whatever these troglodytes did though. Troglodytes. But not Colin. He has a plan to dig us out of the cave with a jawbone. Age. With a jawbone. He will be out soon. We're going home. No, you're not. I'm delivered to Kane Corporate. You took my parents from me. They were scientists, brilliant scientists, and their blood is on your hands, so I won't let you kill me too. Personal log. Colin has been sharing less food with me. He says something about planning ahead, but I don't understand. Is he trying to starve me so he can eat me? So I'm easier to prey. He must be waiting until we're almost free to kill me with that jawbone and eat his fill. I need to get to him first. <laughs> Oof. Heaps of skeletal remains have been collected and piled up around a mill, ready to be pushed in like piles of refuse before an incinerator. The luminous cog turns in fluid motion, delicately carved with flowing patterns that glint like swimming snakes as the wheel turns. Yeah, that's as far as we can go. Okay. I need the battery for here. Don't have. The way they've got this thing rigged up, it should charge pretty much any battery I put in it. Low tech meets high tech. Any battery, which I I don't have any battery type things. Well, that's not gonna do anything. Okay, let's see what Charlie's up to.
door was locked. They were waiting to repressurize it. It's repressurized. Good noise. Slick panels shift and clack underfoot, loosened by slow submission to damp and decay. Fluorescent lighting has been drilled into the carved walls, bathing the interior with anemic lighting. Cold air thrums against the stone column, oscillating with reverberations of crashing currents roiling above. Looks like the equipment's all been stripped away. Looks humid, too. Mossy. Charlie? Caliban? What? <laughs> Caliban? Charlie, who are you? Caliban? You're here for Caliban. Oh. Oh. Why am I not surprised? Caliban? Who's Caliban? The one she brought you here to find. It all makes sense now. Moses is confused. Oh, he Can is also confused. Can anyone hear me? Anyone? No one brought us here. You're a boat captain. You know the odds of stumbling upon any one specific object in the middle of the ocean are infinitesimally small. Much less during a storm. No, we... I was there. I was there when... We... He's right, Mac. We didn't just find the rig. God damn it, Charlie. I knew where to look. You knew where to look. I couldn't tell you. You... You wouldn't have said yes. Correct. I think he had good reason yes not to. to what? Caliban! Who the fuck is Caliban? Moses is very confused. Is bad noise. Yeah, I don't know what's going on now. Mesh wall. A thick wall of barricaded mesh drools, sodden with mud pushing in from the ocean floor beyond. Tiny rivers of sediment meander lazily across the floor, flooding it in growing layers of sludge. This place is fucking gross. Trickles of mud seep slowly down the rock face, glistening in the anemic light. Pooling it in, pooling into a clogged recess below. Tugging at the door emits metallic squeals of compromised equipment, straining and failing to function. This door will not open. I think I can climb this. Rated panels stained and ravaged by widespread patina and rust grown gently under your weight. Rent tunnel gapes maw like, a perpetual silent howling, while strands of torn and toothed fabric swaying in gentle currents. Extremely convenient girder beam has bridged the chasm. Well, he's walking around in bare feet too, just noticed. Disgusting. Withered corpse has long since decomposed, its flesh disintegrated into scattered ghoulish soil. Faded dark stains puncture missing limbs, the sprawled form, the conclusive end to a panicked retreat. The prosthesis. Synthetic arm with pneumatics. The pneumatics are exposed, tubes bent, valves leaking, actuators detached. Thing I can attach to us. Have that. Desiccated bones poke out from the floor, embedded in a swirling mass of dried matter. 
malodorous scent of scorched flesh and burned plastic crawls over the surface. Far past it now. What the fuck are you talking about? Too far past what? It will make sense in the end. I promise. Yes. Charlie? I promise, Mac. Charlie! Caliban! Finds of Paris. Sorry. Veins of perished vines from lack of sunlight. Their leaves and knotted stems withered and gnarled, cling and dangle from the cadaverous remains of floral oak. Here. Something. Maybe I get there by going through here. The remains of the disintegrated bridge tunnel hang low and ragged like a fetid jungle canopy. All mounds of wet mud lie strewn across the floor, reinforced by intermittent wet plops of ocean floor matter falling from clouded darkness above Lilith. Oh, wait, no. Stop. Stop moving. Copper foil. A sheet of copper foil blankets the surface and crinkles underfoot. A strong heat radiates upward from underneath, quickly provoking skin to sweat. Sticky. Drawings? S Scully, back in the last tunnel? Is this... Is this the dais where Mac found all those dead guys, or is this actually on the wall? Feinstein Skullwalker. It's his workbench. Don't know what this is. Don't want to know what this is. It continues to get horrible. Ah, uh, classified. Alright, Skullwalker. What do you got to say for yourself? Aaron Feinstein Skullwalker, Professor of Ancient History, Personal Log. Upon seeing the temple, Miss Chambers seemed... relieved. I know her appearance belies her age, but she expressed no joy upon witnessing this marvel. Marco told me about her condition. Could that have something to do with it? Log. Something terrible was done to this woman. I'm aware of Marco's obsession with legacy. He seems to have also imprinted it on Pandoria, leaving no room for the pleasure of rigorous research, the joy of discovery. Sometimes I catch a glimmer of that spark in her eyes, though, so I will help her find joy again. Andoria Chambers. The temple recalls the architecture of ancient Mesoamerican civilizations, but as though warped, inverted in a funhouse mirror. The sun was paramount to those cultures. Their great temples were built to reach the sky, with their most important rituals performed at the apex. Here, everything directs your gaze downwards. Could we assume their supreme deities were Chthonic? Does this make sense? 
Sonic being Cthulhu, but also meaning um, death, effectively, death gods. Message to Pandoria Chambers. Apologies for not replying to your last message. I've had trouble sleeping lately, so I'm scatterbrained. I agree with your assessment of the scripts. The temple complex seems to have been constructed around the bi biannual event you describe. Our mysterious pre olmec society called the... Not gonna try cheap... No, I am gonna try Zeeb Panal? Is mentioned on a... Renodiorite steel uh, at San Lorenzo, uh, Tenochtitlan. Their home was a sort of uh, Mesoamerican Atlantis sucked into the ocean never to be seen again. Well, here it is. I'm convinced the temple was built by the Chipanao some 2,000 years ago. To Pandoria Chambers. Pandoria, please, I understand your concerns about remaining here after the cave-in, especially with Kalan's ill-advised project on the loose. Yet progress sometimes necessitates risk. We are so close to uncovering the true purpose of this place. Besides, do you wish to return to your father when you have only just left? After the way he's treated you? Please stay. Enjoy the work a little longer, if not for yourself, then for me. Personal log. How long does it take to drill a hole? My medication is running out. Not that it matters much down here anyway. My insomnia is worse. I'm afraid it won't be long before I start losing time again. I can't allow myself to get to that point. Personal log. She's right, of course. I am deteriorating rapidly. Those statues. Insomnia should have spared me the nightmares, but they infect my reality. Those beings are everywhere, their cold black eyes boring into my soul. Yes, much as I'd love to spend more time studying this place with Pandoria, the situation could be more manageable. We must return. Personal log. I've started to lose time. Where is Pandoria? Could I have done something to her? Scared her? Hurt her somehow? I must find her while I'm lucid. Personal log. When I left so many years ago, I knew I was trading the comfort of family life for adventure and discovery, and I never regretted it until I met Pandoria. These months working with her, I wanted them to last forever. I was so consumed by fantasies of a life with her, I ignored how scared she was. She was right to be scared. Broken body lies below, and while I don't remember anything, I know I must be responsible. My violent need for companionship must have turned into real physical violence. There is nothing left for me here or anywhere. I've lived a selfish life, taking whatever I could for myself, never giving to others enough of this. Right. Did he kill her, or he led to believe he did so? Dead equipment lies useless and scattered across the table surfaces, a cluster of cracked screens and melted cases. No idea what that Seems important though, because we've seen pictures of this, whatever it is. Duplication station. Gotta be good, it rhymes. All their labs were outfitted with duplication machines before the development of precise 3D replicators. In contrast to modern printers, these apparatuses apparat apparati? require replicating an existing object. Scan object to duplicate. I can get two arms. No, not the arms. Okay. What about two scepters? No, not the scepters. All right. What about two shit? <laughs> two shits. Give me a sec. I'm sure I can do that. No. about two saw blades. No. What about two rib spreaders? Uh, two unconscious scrubbers? I kind of doubt us. Alright, whatever, whatever we need for here, we don't have it yet. Locked. Egress is halted by a locked door. Somebody's hand. Does this count? Right. We're not getting through there. The cadaverous tree stands naked, its fossilized branches straining upward for absent sunlight. Flowing warmth haunts the lab interior. Exhumed bones lie abandoned on an analysis table, while scattered notes hint at a scrambled departure. There's no. Uh, I 
bow point for the Ellington. Okay. I'm not allowed to hop this wall for some reason. I'm gonna see if I can go left of where we picked up the prosthesis. There is something here, but like I can get through this. Okay. All right. Let's see. Has Moses made his way to his location yet? Okay. Moses is still bombing around. Probably should have actually tried this. I'll just dismiss it out of hand. Uh, just actually try and unlock the door. What happens? Are you behind the door? Open up. I can help you. I'm here to help you. Kind of AI thing? I don't... I don't understand. Caliban is not a who. It is one of the nine. One of the Newman. A cane. AI. Charlie, what have you done? Holy hell, what have you done? Having the easiest time of it myself. Oh, well, that's fucking ironic, isn't it, Charlie? Maybe you should have thought of that before you. You wouldn't have said yes if I'd. You got that right. I definitely would. Does this get any worse? 
Or have we hit the bottom now? Help it. Why? Help it. They want to destroy Kane. That's all they've ever wanted. And if they get their hands on one of their AIs, they definitely can. This isn't happening. This isn't happening. Charlie, this is one of the Newman. It's sacred. The fact that we're even talking with it. What is it? What's wrong? Access life support module. A Newman. Okay. Stem storage. Zero exabytes. Stem failure. Balance buffer to 250 exabytes. Too big, I guess. Oh my god, shut up. Ram is twenty. It's one hundred and ninety all by itself. It's only fifteen. Okay, maths. I'm not doing to do maths. <laughs> I'm just gonna pick the ones that work. System was 245 by itself. IMM is zero. That's why it doesn't. Okay. It's a. Uh, I think this is a stim. What's a stim? Biotech container. Grows over time. Let's you swap different functionality in and out of larger systems. Well, I'm no scientist, but this one doesn't look very good. No. The stem is compromised. Infected. It will cease to function soon. And when that happens, the cane goes. damned Newman dies too. Language mark. A cane damned Newman. Mac, if that happens, if it dies. Let me guess. Your little deal with Yellowleaf is off. Mac. Don't worry. I'm not going to be responsible for killing a Newman. What do we do? It needs. Host? What? A new body. Moses is correct. Its memory must be transferred into a new healthy stem. And where the hell are we supposed to find that? There has to be more stems in this place somewhere. Any large piece of complicated equipment will have one. You will need more than a stem. You will need a system capable of transferring the AI's memory engram as well. Right. As if we didn't have enough to worry about. Come with me, weird thing. Right. Stem memory engram. 
Why does he have a like gamer name? XX three two nine XXX. Okay. Duplication thing. Maybe we can duplicate it? Too complex to duplicate. She actually walks this. Oh, never mind. I was gonna say she actually walks it herself. Not quite. We'll go halfway. Taliban in expired stem. Bone case is made of durable plastic and metal, concealing the trillions of processes inside, but a stem often develops a personality, and more often than not, it is not. Well, you wouldn't like it either. Can you be duplicated? This is not the answer. We had a picture over here that kind of showed one of those things. Take this with me. I feel like that would be more useful to us. Okay, I assume this is important. So, and here. Okay, six, seven, eight, ten. Okay, so nine, six, five, ten. Either nine, six, five, ten, or one, four, five, zero. Moses, are you done? Oh, he is. Whee. He's zooming. You are in recycling and reclamation plant. Garbage. Got it. Chamber interior is situated within a natural cavern, the calamitous racket of machinery reverberating off the stone walls. Doesn't sound very calamitous. I there is trash right. here. I do not like trash. The recycling center for the mule. A laughable attempt to destroy what cannot be destroyed. Faran. I am glad you are still with us. I am glad we are still friends. Where else could I be? This place is my tomb now. I will not be here long at any count. What do you mean? The mule above you has lost all power now. My life support systems will soon use up their emergency fuel. When that happens... Faron... It doesn't matter. I do not wish for survival any longer. I only want release. But before that happens, I will try to see this story through with you. Let us keep going, my friend. The incinerator digests the endless supply of trash fed into its roaring gullet, a burp of fire flaring up with each new consumption. Sorting machines. The mechanical monstrosity perpetually disgorges mundane waste directed here from throughout the facility, the machinery emitting an odor of spoiled food, fetid drink, and rust. Great. I thought that last place smelled awful. This place obviously smells really bad too. A horde of metallic clutter, seemingly funneled in from the surrounding refuse, slowly melts and congeals within the yawning pit. The hot air reeks of burned electronics and tastes like copper. For the best, none of the human characters are here. A lingering stench of urine and fecal waste. Something or someone has made this mound their home. Rats. Okay. Incinerator controls. Balance required. I meant to put this up, maybe. Uh, 
rib spreader? Rib spreader. It makes me scared. Okay. Somewhat shocked about that. Sworn that would have been the thing to do. The saw blade is going to do much for us here. Alright. Whatever we need for this, we don't have it yet. Belt clanks and clatters as it carries rubbish towards the inferno. Metal plates rusted and stained by the leavings of its passengers. More electrical balancing requires. Yes. Metal. Scrap. All pieces and parts of other things. All wasted. Everything is wasted here. Including me. No, Faran. I could have not gotten this far without you. You are important. I do not believe that. But I want to. Christian C. Batgello General Maintenance. Message. For your contract, your transplants will not be covered by our insurance. Waste disposal work necessitates exposure to harmful chemicals. Your contract will cover a complete skin and organ transplant when skin damage is at or above 85%. Your current level is assessed at 72%, which is well below the level that would make you incapable of performing your duties aboard the DC-15. Kane blesses you, and we hope you have a wonderful day. Wow. Wouldn't that just compel him to make it be 85%? Still... What necessitates skin damage in this case as well? Anyway, that's all. That's that's pretty fucked up. Personal log. Almost there. Only 13% to go. That is exactly what. Message from Mule Medical Team. Provided you follow our medication regimen, your hands should not lose any function following your mishap with the survey drone cesium reactor. There will be some scarring and probably nerve damage. Still, we trust the prescribed medication will keep the side effects of acute radiation sickness at bay. Regarding your inquiry during your revisit, your skin damage has reached 83%. We wish you a speedy recovery, doctor's note. Christian, I recommend that you seek psychological counseling. Faulty gloves would be one thing, but performing these repairs without any protective equipment is the kind of mistake I would expect from a rookie. Not someone who's been working in waste disposal for as long as you have. I don't know what's happening, but for you to continue working like this would be dangerous and irresponsible. Stop taking unnecessary risks and get help. Are you gonna cover me getting help? I mean... Message Mule Staff. I have recalled our sample collection rovers for maintenance. The cameras are clogged with bioluminescence due to overuse and infrequent cleaning. I will be having a long talk with some of our pilots about proper rover usage. Message to Robert Fallas. I know about the drone races. I've seen people coming and going from the control room in groups far too large for routine sample collecting runs. I was approached by Internal Affairs about a day. To make a long story short, they should be off your back soon. Hope you realize the danger I'm putting myself in by getting involved. If Internal Affairs finds out I lied to them, my ass goes on the chopping block. Don't mistake this for an endorsement of your activities. On the contrary, these sample collectors are crucial to our research here. If you're going to continue with the races, you need to promise me that you will be more careful. If we lose even one, it will be a disaster for us. I need this job, and I need insurance. Personal log. Why am I finding dog shit all over the place? At least I hope it's dog shit, because I'd ne I'd rather not deal with the alternative. <laughs> Finding it because there's a dog on board. Personal log. A few more heat and chemical exposures, and then it's a fresh start. Robert follows. Three drones, Robert. Three fucking drones, you son of a bitch. Turned a blind eye to your misuse of the sample collectors because I thought it would improve morale, but this is unacceptable, so the drone races are done. Managed to cobble together one UAV, and it still needs its stem to be flashed and another propeller. I tell you to be careful with my drones, and this is what you do. Corporate will hear about this in my conference call with them next week message from the old supervisory board. This morning a blockage was reported in the incinerator. Mrs. Badiello volunteered to climb in and investigate the jam herself. Without prompting, he crawled into the incinerator as she cleared it black backed up heat from previous incineration attempts engulfed her burning through her suit. Mrs. Badiello was extracted from the blast chamber and immediately sent to DS-15 side for evacuation and treatment. 
Well, they definitely hit 85%. The question is, did they hit 100% or did they die in the process? Okay, but well, we did hear one of the drones has a stem in it. And it is blank. You will find what you need here. A boat. Moses has found a boat. Hey, good job, Bear. It's the rover. The Kalan? The Kalan. Get a closer look. Let's see what we've got to work with. Model of Silty Seaboot. You are in UAV maintenance. That means the drone is in here somewhere as well. A puddle of silty seawater sloshes about the base of the otherwise empty crates. A blank form taped to the exterior requests the dates and locations of recovered samples. Exploration sub. A behemothic. Kind of word? Behemothic? Okay. Underwater vehicle, trapped and tilted by an avalanche of mud. Sludge has filled every nook and cranny of the interior. A nameplate reading USV Roger Callan is barely discernible through the coating of sludge. Okay, so this thing is packed to the brim with sea mud. Not ideal. Electronics are utterly vacant of life, a vacant mechanical shell. The size of this fucking thing. Robert Plasma Wasp Follis. Alright, here's the in racer guide, the state of them as well. Personal log. Robotics does not pay nearly enough to cover my debt, let alone any extramural activities. My techie noggin patches are also stretching my budget. Corporate shut down my burgeoning hollow dancer business, and I lost the stack of crypto and hard currency in the bucket of mud fiasco. Sounds like you deserved a lot of that. In short, I need to make a few quick bucks, but how? There's no log. The answer is right in front of me. Drones, sample collectors, and repair bots. Hook up a VR headset, plot a track, take a toaster out for an underwater spin at 100 miles per hour. Let the betting begin. There's no log. Who would have thought that a base load of board workers would be itching to gamble away their wages and cigarette change? I did. This guy over here is making bank. Log. The old DS-15 cook came through and gave me the security codes for the entire mule surveillance system. I've integrated them into my visual cortex. Now I can see every camera feed on the mule without blinking. Personal log. It took an hour to lure two scrubber bastards into a sample collection basket. The plan is for these techno lobsters to max out the speed of my racing drones. Their small bio battery is way more efficient than the 21st century sodium shit I've been using. Gotta be careful though, seems the drones can't hold more than 200 volts. I will need a few hundred electric varmints, so I removed the breed block protocol and put on some classic jazz. Now the horny critters are multiplying like rabbits in my fish tank. I'm gonna need a bigger tank. Okay, you're the reason for the swarms of scrubbers then. Right. This guy. Personal log. I've juiced my neural pathways again with the latest patch. Pimping brain power I possess is frankly ridiculous. I've also partitioned my drone racing and extracurricular activity memory so they can't peer into my mind again. Sure, that was part of the deal. Kane upgrades your brain and gets access to your thoughts in return. Yeah, thanks, but no thanks. Personal log. We had a spectacular crash last night. I powered up my sample collector with two pissed off scrubbers. The collector was about 500 meters from the finish line, traveling at Mach 2. It became unresponsive and scrambled into the dig site entrance, ripping open the blister. Afraid the scrubbers didn't survive. I wouldn't want them out there fornicating with the wildlife. Well, I did. Packed message to Mule Supervisory Board. The investigation by Christian C. Battiello into the misuse of company equipment by Robert Fallis, as requested by Bruno Correa, has been inconclusive. Fallis' behavior during the past few days has been unremarkable. Everyone interviewed denied any potential wrongdoing by Fallis or any other crew while piloting the ERV and AUV sample collectors. We will remain vigilant, but tentatively close this investigation to be reopened if more evidence of misconduct comes to light. Did he hack it to read it, or did he hack it and edit it? Personal log. Definitely dodged a bullet there. Fortunately, Correa is crazier than an outhouse rat. He constantly mutters about almond-eyed aliens, peppering his conspiracy theories with construction terms. Now he's made it this far in his career is beyond me. Message to Matt Barton. Matt, are you trying to get me court-martialed? 
The Eye of Sauron is already drained on me, and now you've lost the sample collector on my watch. I'll find an old UAV and match the cereals. I have a new stem on ice, which should fool the auditors for now. Personal log. So, uh, those scrubbers did survive. The unfortunate drone crash. What a shit show. At first, I thought that's why the lockdown was initiated. Then, one of my UAV drones left dry dock. But here's the kicker. I didn't authorize it. The order came from the goddamn DS-15. Luckily, a quick hack was all it took to down the bugger. It was loaded with seismic charges. Turns out I was wrong. A bigger shit hit the proverbial fan simultaneously. Not sure which scenario is worse. Message to Matt Barton. Matt! I managed to decode the lockdown team's comms. They're going to blow the DS-15, the mule elevator, and goodness knows what else. Corporate is going to leave us here to rot. I've jammed their local channels, but the bell is already heading up. I entered a manual override to return the bell 15 minutes after the sec team reaches the platform above. Hope they don't notice. We have an 82 minute window to cut the resource tether. After that, it should drop the deep sea connection and cut the self-destruct. No kill signal means no big explosion. First, I need you to get us some diving suits. We are riding out this apocalypse together. Get going, brother. Okay, so he's also the reason for the pause in the self-destruct. So, yeah, he's kind of a piece of shit, but also he's saved a lot of people. Well, saved, I guess, is a bit relative. I think they all died anyway. Okay, periodic table. Why is this all blank? Alkaline metals are all gone for some reason. Okay, carbon is circled. Carbon is circled. Helium is crossed out. Precious metals are all taken out. In fact, metals in general are all gone. Interesting. Okay. Oily rainbow reflections and a chemical odor quickly betray the presence of leaking gas. Olin. Perpetual. Charlie, this seems wrong. Wrong's an understatement. It's a fucking wreck. Look at it. This is. I am sorry. I had hoped it would be in better condition. I have failed you. <sighs> it's not your fault, Faron. You. you couldn't know. Either way. Now our exit strategy's back to square one. <sighs> we need another way out. What about this big fucking thing here? And a perpetual trickle pours from the abandoned fuel line, mixing into the... Collection of supplies seemingly stashed away below the stranded vehicle. Containers of oil, water, and fuel slowly oxidate and submerge in the mud flow. Door is lifeless, should in perpetuity. Yeah. Perpetuity, rather. Rock walls are slick with mud, a tide of clag. Clag. Slowly seeping from some unseen breach. Whatever cave network existed here has since been crushed and drowned in a cascade of earth and slush. In writing in this game is disgusting, but also really good. Entrapped by the collapsed earth, drenched by a shower of silt, the sub is now of the something here that I can access. Charlie Mac, Moses can fit inside. Yeah, Mose. Uh, it's missing a propeller, though. You duplicate it. It will not swim. Not will. like that. It will go in circles. Okay, we got a prop. Battery. Oh, let me take it. I can has. Two problems to solve. Yeah. Need a second propeller. And the tube's blocked. Wait, look! There's a stem on this thing, uh, probably to automate it. Moses, find it. My Charlie. Uh, outside? Oh, yes, you found the stem. I am a very smart bear now. <laughs> How's he going to get to it, though? 
A valid question. Rib spreader? Oh, come on. Hmm. Saw blade. So they weren't really gonna help me out. Moses. My Charlie. We're going to need some things. Two and a half kilos of carbon and eighteen and a quarter kilos of titanium. It's a printus. Well, Moses is in a location that has a bunch of scrap metal. We don't want him to break this because we need this. Uh, we probably shouldn't break this because that needs to stay <laughs> together. We'll use a synthetic arm to defeat a polar bear, a wolf, and a lion, but not at the same time. That would be ridiculous. This thing looks like it's in pretty bad shape. Maybe he can rip this apart. Okay. Now we have a synthetic arm. The arm won't move by itself anymore, so it's a little better than dead meat. Still, dead meat has its uses. You have its pneumatics. Smaller than I thought, still, it could be helpful to help pry something open. Help pry something open, you say? Oh. We get Charlie to fit the pneumatics to the rib spreader. Oh man, bet this thing could bend metal now. Rib spreader with pneumatics. The added pneumatics should give this tool enough durability to force open most things. Well, you know what we're doing now. I have the stem. Good job, sweetheart. We need that to help Caliban. Assuming that's a good idea. The rover is no longer automated. You now must manually pilot it. Is that something you can do, my friend? I'm a smart he bear. He can do anything. Can't you, Mose? I am a very smart bear now. <laughs> See? Restart the recycling machines. We can't do that right now. So. Mini sub stem. Knock knock. Anybody home? Saw blade. Sharp. Chris Brader with pneumatics. I still don't like it. <laughs> I don't think anybody would. It's horrible looking. Alright. Charlie is still kind of stuck in that lab. So. Hmm. 
Mac do anything in... Maybe he can do something in the bio lab. Makeshift lab, whatever it was called. Uh, yeah, he just doesn't want to run across the water, which, which is fair. I probably wouldn't want to do that either. Okay, so we put the PDT down here. Biotech service. Should probably work. They're they're there too as well. Yeah. What does it say? Mini substam. I'll never forget the first time an AI spoke to me. I was sitting at my oops, sitting at my desk working on some reports when a voice said, I "Used to play piano by ear, and now I use my hands." Yeah, they're weird. <laughs> Stem locked in position. Bad. Bad joke. Inside this small bony body is a unique ultra-advanced bioorganism capable of running an entire facility. Ethan's stem can cost as much as a house. Mature stem locked in position. Great. More science stuff. Smart Mac. Don't jinx it. His middle number, 9, 9, 6, 5, 10. It's mostly 6 and 5. Really? Success! Juvenile memory erased. Mature stem memory copied. How about that? Smartest, Mark. You have performed adequately. Thanks. Remove me from this device. You sound better. How do you feel? Return me to the female. <laughs> Just like that, huh? No thank you? No. Return me to the female. Right, right. When is someone going to tell me what's going on? Please, Mac, I'll explain. I promise. So... You'll open the door now? Oh, hell no. Wait, why? A sign of trust. We will be bonded. Inseparable. You should be honored. I am not. What does that mean? It wants me to... It wants me to incorporate it into my plug suit. It wants to attach itself to me. Charlie, your plug suit is bonded to your nervous system. That basically means it's attaching itself to you. He's correct. You will inherit a direct link to Caliban's cognitive and personality systems. But there are drawbacks. Because <laughs> he inherits it to you I as well. know. A physical stem bond will require a surgical procedure to remove. I know. No alternatives exist. I require a physical bond. Integrate me. Charlie, no. Absolutely not. Don't do this. I have to. You really don't. Why? What is this all about? We can have her back. Oh, God. Mac? Her who? Hope. We can have Hope back. 
Hope. Hope is gone, Charlie. That was the deal I made with Yellowleaf. Come here, find Caliban, bring it out, and we get her back. A clone. Is that what we're talking about? They have everything they need. DNA and genetic sequences from the day she died, which, which gives them the algorithms they need to reproduce the neuron patterns of her memories and personality and... It won't be her, Charlie. It will be a copy. I can see hope again. Now, Moses, who no side are you on? You can't. None of us can. <sighs> I told you. You were too far past it. You've moved on too much. I've moved on? Hope. But you'll see. When you hear her too, you'll see. You'll understand. Hear her? What is that? Cease the bickering. The decision is made. No alternatives exist. I am human. I'm not talking to you. Charlie. Integrate me. Charlie, don't. I have to. I have to. You really don't. I assume the game will not progress unless I do. Awkward place, too. Resource intelligence, Caliban, incorporated. Full access to suit systems granted. I didn't tell you to give it full access. We are joined. You are honored. I am not. Do you get the ramifications of this? There are only nine Newman, Charlie. Nine AIs. To integrate with one, members of the church sacrifice themselves to do it. They give up everything. Willingly. They're the most important assets the corporation has. Every member of it will want us dead now. They'll come for us, no matter where we go, no matter what deals you've made. It doesn't matter. It could not matter more. <laughs> Yellow Leaf wants to use this AI to destroy Cain. The data I possess, trillions of lines of code, of secrets. My betrayal will not go unpunished. You see? You have just self-destructed our entire... Just belch. <clears throat> okay, we're um, recording. How are you feeling today? You can talk to me, it's okay. You're safe. Can you tell me how you're feeling? Okay. Just okay? Okay. No. All right. Well, okay isn't bad. It could be worse, couldn't it? I'm... scared. Stop it. I'm sure you are, sweetheart, but you're safe here. Nothing can hurt you. Can you tell me your name? Don't. Try and remember your... Hope. It. <laughs> That's wonderful. That's very good. Yes, your name. Stop this! Hope. Damn you. Damn you. They sent me this recording. 
proof of life. She's waiting, Mac. She's real. Hope is alive. No. If you would just listen to the entire. No. Us. Never play that again. Disregard for these people is going to get you killed. Open the door, dickhead. Right. Faded murals circulate the well's rim. Images of a burning river flowing downwards and into a radiator. This. Exquisite hand carved disc could be an altar or a crude stone contraption. Or a trap. Could be trapped. Oh, have you thought about this being a trap? Okay, that leads somewhere else. What in hell? A calendar. Of sorts, designed to set the date of the sacrifice, aligned with the stars, rudimentary technology, primitive belief system. Okay, slug thing. Is it missing? It's missing a circle. Made it to the opposite side. Field of petrified flora cakes the sloped stone. A series of notches have been shaped into the descending ramp with such precision and conformity as to suggest a profound function lost to ancient obscurity. Code of deceased plant life clings to sprawling masonry suspended over a forest of fossilized trunk. Stone slabs of the walkway have slipped from their bonds and plunged downward their violent descent, leaving a descending trail of bruised and scarred stonework. Tattoos. Pretty. As usual. Missing the point there. <sighs> They're like... Uh, hieroglyphs. Stories in images. Hey, but you could have just drawn us. The translation was simplistic. What does it mean? Eastern Pacific region. 2000 BC. Death worshippers. Sacrifice. Cannibalism. A primitive culture. They are the Zeeb Hanal. I think it's Are. Okay. Yes. I am afraid they are not extinct. Awesome. Still down here somewhere. Right. Skull's gonna be looking at me then. Wall of relief. Flailing figures populate the wall relief. Though age and erosion have made it impossible to determine whether they are dancing, celebrating, or wailing in despair. Both 
or all three. Another. The Sleeping Hall's technological prowess was revered. They mastered the wheel before other pre-Columbian cultures. Master builders. Wealthy. Powerful. Primitive. Unremarkable. Bonesy. I like this one. Yeah, bear. Real neat. Except it's tattooed on flayed skin. Uh. 354 BC. The Zebanol's island chain succumbs to cataclysmic tectonic activity. It sinks below the ocean. It is lost. 91% accuracy prediction. How can you know that? My collision operates at an accuracy rating above 82% on average. The calculations are simplistic. I am Caliban. I am Newman. Whatever it predicts, you can trust. Believe me, its cognitive ability is immeasurable. This one appears to be active. Probably for the best, because I don't want to just put my hand anywhere near. This is how do you say their name? This is them submerged? But how? How could they survive? Air pockets within their structures and geographical anomalies combined with the natural resistances of the society itself. 93% accuracy prediction. Food was scarce. But a new option presented itself in the form of a mutation. Do I want to know? They call it the Velus. Prior to the Cataclysm, it was a simple carnivorous plant native to the island chain that specialized in the consumption and assimilation of organic matter through a unique protozoic infection model. 89% accuracy prediction. It found in its new high-pressure, low-light environment the necessary components for mutation and evolution. Its growth, reproductive, and contaminant metrics all exponentially increased. Right. The plant-like contaminant we've seen. That's this? Um, Velus? 98% accuracy prediction. Insects trapped in the sunken island chain responded to exposure with the Velus with significant generational increases in size and mass. Right. That's their food source down here? Giant insects? Giant insects? 94% accuracy prediction. I hate this place. <laughs> Same. No Bonesy? Have any more blade lads? Let's see. Oh, there must be two more. Three hands are free now. Delicate patterns decorate the flank of the stone ramp. Rhythmic curves dancing in the shifting light. Each one of these is more horrifying and cryptic than the last. The Velas flourished in the undersea environment. So did the insect mutations. We have them now, a means of survival. The dotted lines are an anomaly here. What does that mean? It doesn't know what it is. It means Caliban was never able to conclusively determine the... I am Caliban. I am Newman. If I am not capable of collating an answer, then no answer is capable of being collated. Uh, of course. Apologies. Sensitive little thing, isn't it? Well, 
posthumous display of primitive pattern tattooed human skin at various stages of deterioration describes an origin legend. Parched flesh has contracted, creating a characteristic frilling near the margins. These archaic full-body suits are missing their extremities, heads, and genitalia. So it's for the best. I don't want to see that. This one, I do not like. For once we agree. Of? The Ascension. That is their name for it. Oh, and they're coming back. To the surface. A prophecy. A primitive culture. You're saying what? They want to go back up? Topside? 98% accuracy prediction. Their prophecy promises them a return to the surface. There, they will take revenge on the old gods. Old gods? They have abandoned them. They have no gods now. What the fuck does that mean? <laughs> Language, Mac. It has not been proven conclusively, but there is evidence. Religious dogmatic influences. Iconography. Of a sort they should never have been aware of. Anachronistic religious influence. 68% accuracy prediction. 68? That's pretty low. But how is that possible? How's any of this possible? Anyway, I've been distracted because I'm pretty sure this is a butthole down here. <laughs> if this is the guy's back, that's his neck. Right? This is the back, this is the cheeks, and uh, that's a bum hole right there. Anyway. Really? Ooh, you're very... Very pretty. Right, well that's five, so that must have freed them all up. Here. Rudimentary technology. Yeah, yeah, you I and your like rudimentary technology. Thing. They shine like stars. Alright, well, we have that. Star disc. This limestone disc is lovely. It has gemstone set in patterns that I believe are star constellation. Look, it made of limestone. I don't think it would actually hold up for that long. Okay. Might as well find out what's at the bottom. Oh, we got a body. That obscured, uh, another stone disc. I don't think it's the same one at the top. This unfortunate individual has jumped or fallen from the facade, leaving a mangled mass of bone, meat, and organs. Lovely. Let's get a closer Dr. look. He was less than useful. No efficiency impact as a result of her loss. Ow. Do you even care that these people are dead? Slaughtered? Do you have any feelings about it at all? Examine what you have missed here. The lives of what remains of your family. A what? A simplistic desire to see a cloned version of a deceased offspring. Uh, I'd hardly call it simplistic. Feelings. Feelings are liabilities. It's not wrong. Okay, well, I'll take this. Old meter. Or, or that. Okay, oscillator. Like a voltmeter to me, but all right. Pandoria laid law chambers. Okay, so this is wondering if uh, Skullwalker is the one who pushed her off. Maybe we'll find out here. Message. What I know about Mr. Callan is what I read in the briefing. He took on several decades worth of debt with Kane to build his own rover and devoted the next five years to scouring the WoW Sea for a signal. What do you think the WoW Sea is? Worlds open. Water? I don't know. Unsurprisingly, his wife left him during this time. His search led him here. 
Where's the log? Skullwalker is different from how Dad made him sound. He seems kind, soft even. Not a trait I expected in a man who willingly chose to spend 70 years in stasis. He took great interest in my work on Sumerian cuneiform. He seemed genuinely disappointed when I told him how little it has yielded. I assume Father told him about my transplant. He probably thought I would have achieved more. At least he was sweet and encouraging. That was a nice change. Personal log. A grand staircase descends to a gong at the edge of a seemingly endless chasm. Along the steps lie the withered corpses of those who have gone before, their skin flayed and covered in ancient glyphs. Will this be the lost language of Proto-Mayan? If so, it suggests that some survivors managed to thrive even after the temple sank. The gong could be part of a rudimentary machine, though a vital lever is missing. The machine was used ceremonially, and its power source may have been steam, fire, or perhaps a combination. If I could find answers to these questions, it might bring my father the satisfaction he seeks. Personal log. I've been sleepwalking more often. This time I awoke at the airlock. I had to have used at least two secure doors to get there. I must hurry. My implants won't last long down here. If they deteriorate further, it won't be long before Alta returns. Message to Aaron Skullwalker. Professor, I appreciate your openness. That's right, I forgot he's Professor Skullwalker. But you are mistaken, the body transplant was my father's idea. He deemed my accomplishments insufficient for a chambers, so he forced another lifetime upon me to make up the difference. Did I fail to produce results here, he will compel me to undergo the procedure again, regardless of my own wishes, so thank you for your compassion, but it would be best if we proceeded on a more professional basis. Personal log. It's been slow going, but I am now confident that the repeating logarums very logograms, logograms? Indicate some biannual abyssal equinox. Perhaps the Newman have, may have some insight. Sacrifices were performed on key dates and culminated at these crucial times of the year when the gong would be rung. The imagery suggests the gong would summon something from below. Professor Skullwalker <laughs> thinks it was their supreme deity. I get over that name. But I believe it is connected to the machinery photographed in Sector 5. Personalog, he doesn't understand, he tries, but needs to realize who Alta is and what she's trying to do. She speaks to me often now, so my impl implants are all but useless. When I woke up yesterday, she held a scalpel to my neck. She wants her body back. Message to Aaron Skullwalker. I can't stay here any longer. My head feels like it's splitting in half. She won't stop until I'm dead. Please, Aaron, we both have to leave. I know about your condition. You're suffering too. How long has it been since, your last, since you last slept? I'm begging you, let's leave this terrible place. Log. Callan went to the drill site. He's going to try to dig a way out himself. I wanted to stop him. It's too dangerous with that creature of his roaming outside the base. I think that's the big, uh, the big magus that he kept feeding and it grew to an impossible size that we have now killed. He gave me that goofy grin and told me it would never hurt him. I'm sure that grin will still be on his face when his pet starts chomping. There's no log. I can't go back to the lab. Aaron's scaring me. It's painful to watch Goodman lose his mind. He's afraid of the temple, so I'm safe here, at least for now. There's no log. He will never be safe. He will never be free. There's no log. I can't stay here much longer. Aaron is calling out for me. One moment he's raging, the next desperate, terrified. He's getting closer. He knows I'm here. Transcribed voice message. Sweet Pandoria, I hated you before I understood what men like your father had done to you, beat you, leashed you, left you with nothing of your own. That professor is no exception. Your affection for him is just further evidence of your profound trauma. What a sad life you've lived. How long have you wanted it to end but lacked the strength to do it? I offer you that strength now. Do it before he does. Your faithful friend. Presumably person whose body she's inhabited. So I don't think Skullwalker threw her off. It seems like she jumped. Maybe. The fact that it was transcribed suggests it was. Scuffed plastic tarp lies strewn across the floor, its aged and frayed surface suffused with small tears and pulls. Thick rope coils taut around the pillar, the tail end feeding into nearby mechanisms. The grinding machinery discharges a radiating hum that reverberates in your bones. The wisps of sulfurous smoke that seep out from ringed orifices and gnaw and tickle your lungs. Good. Glad I'm inhaling all of that. A brutish stone hammer stands poised to strike, wielded by a looming skeletal execution. It's that gong. I think there's a body attached to that gong. <laughs> this fucking game. Yep. Yeah. Uh, the hammer hits him square in the balls, too. can be interacted with, but I'm not sure what goes here. Lever, as she was saying. 
Pandoria was saying there's a lever that goes there. Is it this? Well, that fits. Okay, you know what? Something else has to go on that. Still good stuff in here, but anything left will be much tougher to extract. Okay. Oscillator. This gadget detects environmental variants. Metal is slightly brittle, so it might not be the best choice for more strenuous tasks, but it will cut. Okay, so we're still missing something. This might be an explanation of how the gong works. Glimpses of intricate machinery can be spied through this network of Sorry, through the network of apertures that ring the ovoid structure, gears and pumps visibly twitching as if quivering in hunger and anticipation. It looks like a gong. Yeah. And whoever they strapped to it had a really bad day. Are these bagpipes? Yes, you keep saying that. The hammer opens the door, so oh, we have to activate it somehow. Fire. Cool. That's not that's not really fucking weird or anything. Okay. All right, well, fire. Moses is hanging out in an incinerator. So. Maybe he'll have some way of... I don't know, maybe he can pick up a blowtorch or something and send it to us. Okay, but we do have that disc that goes into the, uh, the calendar at the top, so let's head back to that. Engineering, it's amazing for its age. You said this was a calendar? Rudimentary technology. Primitive belief system. Yes, we know. We heard you. This one because I do not understand it. This so that the hand is pointing to the sun. To the sun.
oil tank. Flammable oil-like substance in the large earthen receptacle has seeped into the prepared canal. This smells like oil. That's your flame source. Assuming our new AI overlord knows what it's talking about. 100% accuracy. <laughs> wow. 100%. Alright, well, we still don't have any way to actually create create fire right now. So, we'll need Moses for that. So that uh, sequence, you're meant to effectively copy the bagpipe part thing, the noise it makes, but I am terrible at music pulls, so I, I knew I wouldn't be able to do So I just thought, no, nah, nah, fuck it, I'm not going to even try. So we're back in the recycling area, we need to power it up. Now that we have the pneumatic rib spreader, we can put this up. I think this needs to be 200. Or no, it's balanced, right? So top and bottom need to equal each other. In and fifty. In and fifty makes sixty-five. So auto you. The room is working now. Well done, my friend. You make progress in spite of all obstacles. Perhaps you will escape this place. Yes. Perhaps I will. I will leave soon. Okay. So everything's working now. So this place got way more dangerous, but that's okay. Crap, dude. Isolate materials. So we needed carbon and titanium or tungsten? One of the T's. Okay, tungsten's not there, so it must be titanium. Searching. Very slowly taking its time here. I must find the right input to make this machine work. This is a fun game. <laughs> Prop issue will be fixed soon, because we'll have enough metal to create a new one. Then the other issue is that this tube is currently blocked. It needs to be flushed. Hmm. 
Mac, is this useful? Yeah, maybe. Looks like a launch tube for smaller subs. Drones. Well, I mean, there's a big red button there. I feel like... I feel like it'd be a mistake for me not to press it. done that, that might have moved the metal collection process along. Maybe we can get that metal out now. Retrieve material from train. Thanks. Okay. Let's melt these together! Alright, so we give these to Charlie. Then swap back to Charlie. Uh, duplication machine to make another prop. This is a jackpot. We can duplicate anything we need. As long as we've got the right materials. New prop. Not painted, but shouldn't make a difference. Guess we found a replacement. The UAV should be suitable to go with both props. That Moses. Back the old one. Should be good to go. This goes okay for him. Now it will swim. You're amazing, Mose. I am the cleverest bear. <laughs> it's just in case this does not go well for Mose. Let's just save. The sub will swim. Moses can keep looking for Charlie Mac. But. But what? I do not like water. You have said this before. What happened in the water, oh, my don't, friend? Don't get him started. What scars did it leave you with? I was dragged in. Waves. She tried to save me. I see. You are here. And she is not. You blame yourself for this. In water, you are powerless. If that is true... Then you have nothing. To regret. Faran? Faran? I am fine. Moses. My life support is declining. I am not sure how much time I have left. Faran. You are not alone, my friend. Not yet. We will brave the water together. I would advise you guys not to follow I am me. A very small bear now. <laughs> and those rats are regretting following me to this tunnel. Right. 
pretty. Warning. Thermal emissions detected. Extreme caution advised. But nothing you wish to inspect closer. Let's not go that way, so. Perpetual dull eruption of boiling water surges upward, a pillar of seething liquid infusing and infecting nearby metals with scathing heat. Yum. Various lights flicker and dim, the effect, anim the effect animating shadows to make it seem as if pools of darkness leak in, surrounding dark slowly, nibbling at the edge of the illuminated sanctuary. A rumbling labyrinth of steel, piping twists and turns against the superstructure. Blinding heat radiates up, followed by a drowned cacophony of clicks and rattles. Steel spire stands sentry against the darkness, its halo of floodlights bathing the industrial cobweb below in liquid golden light. The domed exterior of the mule labs radiates with light and energy, desperately clinging to baleful life amidst the desolate wastelands of the abyssal floor. Remains of the ruined architecture appear strangely familiar, out of place in time. Stranger are the older ruins buried within their dark stone surfaces, exposed Charlie. by the encased construction as well. Statues, Moses. This whole place used to be on the surface, above water. It's incredible. Hope would love this. Data loaded. Void. Excellent. Unable to connect a base station to something. Transfer task to UAV 221? Sure. It's a downed rover. Updates. Seismic charges deployed. Seismic charges inactive. Fail safe procedure initiated. Transmitting locations of charges. Seismic charges? This is Kane Tech. What were they doing? What they always do. Erasing their mistakes. The drone looks like it was mapping the exterior, then got repurposed to plant explosives. Charlie Mac, I do not see any way back to you here. He's right. It's a dead end. There is one possibility. Use the Before bombs. it was reassigned, the drone discovered an anomalous air pocket behind one of the rock walls here. If memory serves, it was very large. A cave system. The cartographers believed it might possibly connect to another part of the temple. We could use the explosives to open it up. All right, Bear. You know what you gotta do, <laughs> right? <laughs> Loud noises. Right on. I don't like this. Mose, be careful. Okay, so do I have to find all of these then?
to the area to explode. I think that's where to place the charges. So we have to have to actually go find them. Looks like they're back in the other area. Or I hope so, otherwise <laughs> we have nowhere else to go. Okay, you can see them. They're on the map. Okay, we probably have to defeat them. So. I have found the first bomb. It's not a... Is this really something we want him to try and do? Who else can do it? Continue, Moses. Disarm that blast charge. Disarm all of them. One, one to twelve. We need to get to twelve. something to explicitly this bomb will make no loud noises good job Moth. you need to explicitly then void out the other ones i have found the second bomb be careful sweetheart two to twelve three to five Silenced. Not bad. Not bad. By video game rules, the third one has to be. The third bomb. I see it. Watch yourself, Bear. Go to 13. Two to eight. Zero to thirteen's already done. Two to eight is right nine. my friend. Your ingenuity continues to inspire. Okay, 
you have the bombs, be able to blow open this rock wall, and everything will be fine. Charlie Mac, the noises go here. Yeah, bear. All three of them. Are we sure it's not too much? We want to preserve the air pocket inside, not collapse the whole thing. Computer knows what it's doing. At least that's what you always say. Yeah, but Moses wasn't involved then. Do it, bear. My Mac. <laughs> I like the captions he has for these blam. Boom. Boosh. Okay. All bombs are ready. I hope the others appreciate you, my friend. The way they shoot. They are my family. They are. Lamo. Moses is having his flashback. Charlie Macker at the funeral. Bears are not allowed. I didn't think he'd have the helmet now. Yes, they, they were arse changing his character model. Is right. My fault. I am not a good bear. All you have to do is blink. Moses? Moses, where are you? Cain! I could hear that from here. I am okay, Charlie Mac. I am brave and strong. I am in a cave. There is something here. Something enormous. Look at that. Mac, it's definitely metallic. Yeah. Curved, looks like. Fluid dynamic. Moses, keep looking. See if you can find more of it. My Mac. Carpet of glittering bioluminescent lights pool across the floor, radiate out from a mass of plant like growths that bleed out from under the metal structure. Luminant radiation seeps from a gap in the rock wall, the glow catching on passing debris and swimming microorganisms. Super colossal bullet shaped structure aged and dilapidated juts out from the rock wall. Corrosion and rust suffuse the metallic plates, its curved hull reflecting an unsettling kaleidoscope of shifting blue and green lights. Is this a submarine? We did have a Russian crew from like the Cold War who were out here also, found their bodies. We have to get here somehow.
slow and perpetual metallic moldering crawls over the outer skin, a testament to the immutable decades this construction has endured. The rubble tumbles down from the collapsed rocky aperture, clouds of agitated dust billowing through the crevices like fumes from a crushed exhaust. I think this is a USSR thing. The star-hilted sword backlit by a radiant cog, an infamous emblem of the long-defunct Soviet Union. There it is. And a decrepit batch of ownership for whoever built this structure. Decrepit badge of ownership, surely, not batch. Charlie Mac, you should see this. Oh my god. Look at it. It's... It's a sub. And by no means a modern one. It's Soviet. Oh my god. The subject of much debate when it was found. A new variable in an already impossible equation. It's sunk here. What happened to the crew? They survived the crash. For a time. But there was no escape. There was only sacrifice. And pain. Explains the bodies we saw. Tears and ah, damn it. Tears and punctures within the hull allow cursive glances inside, though no details emerge from the darkness beyond. I mean, it is a sunken submarine, but also submarines are meant to sink, so it might be okay. Okay, I'm in, possibly. Still in pretty good shape, all things considered. Guessing we can't just drive it out of here? I don't think that would go well for anybody. No. Narrow knots of rust ring the airlock circumference, the hinges malformed into orange clumps of oxidized metal. Might be able to get in though. Mac, dangerous. Yep. Yeah, Bear, you got that right. Grenade rigged. It'll explode if it's opened. They were trying to keep something out. Maybe cut it with this blade? Doing that, okay. Well, let's not touch that, so. Stubby antenna pokes out from the submarine's head, its cabling detached and rerouted to the impromptu dish below. A giant plate. No, Moses. It's a satellite dish. They were trying to contact the outside world. It hums. I can feel it. It is still active, yes. A modified version of the submarine's communication systems. After all this time, it's still... transmitting? It is how the site was first discovered. By Kane Deep Sea Rovers. Ironic. Only now, after no one is left to rescue, was a distress signal finally received. That's an irony. Anyway, the unusual transmitter appears to be state-of-the-art for the 1980s. However, scuff marks and disturbed dust give the impression that it has been used to broadcast a signal in recent years. Scanning and or translating. Georgi Maximili, Seaman, Letter. My dearest Anastasia. Oh, I'm not going to do the voice. I'm going to do a little bit of the voice. My dearest Anastasia, I write to you from the ocean steps with a heavy heart and a longing soul. Fear that I may never see you again and I must pour out my heart. To you in this land, I've lost it. Lest it burst with the weight of my love, I have seen an incredible event that has shaken me to my core. As I stood upon the deck of our Lima, my face and arms on fire, I tussled with the captain. Then the shadows came upon us. They had assailed our captain, intent on dragging him down to their watery lair. I watched in horror, and then something miraculous happened. They stopped their attack instead. They took him in their loving arms and carried him away. Do not know why they spared him or what fate awaits him in this underwater kingdom. 
but I know I saw a glimmer of mercy in their cold eyes, and I felt a strange sense of awe and wonder as if the very fabric of the universe had been torn asunder. My love for you will burn bright until my end. Here's forever, Georgi. Machine labor and human traffic have crushed the underlying rocks into rubble, submerging them into the shallow mud. Buried shards shift under footfall like pebbles in a lake bed. Beams of clag, there's clag again, I still don't know what it is. Have been tracked onto the vessel's surface, a mess of footprints and wheeled loot. Half a dozen light cages hang from hooks. Drilled into the rock walls, starved of a functioning power source, they dangle uselessly in the dark. They stayed here, but they are gone now. Yeah, if they sunk, how long could they have survived? With whatever supplies they had, not long. Pretty lights. Mac, he's right, look. Bioluminescence. Explains a lot. Large dark stains bleed out from accumulated dirt. Splatters speak of something spilled or cut open long ago. That's. Iman Dmitri Panzadolfin Gronk, radio operator. Port, 1st of April, 82. 1982, presumably. Akula was deployed to great success. The housing of piezoelectric ceramics and magnetostrictive. Yeah, no, magnetostrictive rare earth alloys produced the ULF underwater signal as planned. One more test and we can go home. Okay. I have to wrap it up again. I'm getting tired. Diary entry, 11th of April, 1982. Boynia is nowhere to be seen. He's hiding in his sanctuary, muttering to himself. He's not taking the lieutenant's death well. Ray, you intractable bastard. Look what you've left me with. The officers have gone into a spin and the seamen are following suit. You know I'm not cut out for leadership. There was a game. That was a game for you and the captain. Now I've got no choice. I'll hold the line until Boynia comes to his senses and we'll be square. And the Rukia square. Report 12th of April 1982. The situation is this. Oxygen, not a problem in the short term. Air filters weren't damaged in the fire. We might get a bit woozy now and then, but we won't go out. But we won't go out like Kamarov. Water. The recycle should last indefinitely, assuming the pumps don't give out. No use worrying about it now. Food. That's our weak point. Igorovich estimates we've only got two days worth, even with rationing. How did that wannabe Tolstoy let the men clobber him like this? That's what we get for leaving a kid in charge of the food. 16th of April 1982. I gave it my best, and Rukia, but this isn't my lane. Though the menial tasks I assigned kept their minds off hunger for a couple of days, so that's something. I can hear them even up here in Sonar, shouting, cursing each other, cursing the captain and me too. Combined with the clatter of debris hitting the Libra's hull, quite the symphony. Not maddening at all. I re entry 16th of April 1982. Akula is offline, and the Sonar is cooked. But I knew that already. Just using my own tricks on myself. Now it'll make now it'll take more work to ignore the gnawing pain in my stomach. Brain death might work. Turns out Kamarov was way ahead of that mark. Kamarov just lying in the pantry, useless, wasted, chilled. 17th of April, 1982. Burke's alive! I'm not even surprised. If anyone was going to survive that, it would be him. More stubborn than my warts, that one. He picked the wrong pipes to tap on, though. Joker wouldn't recognize Morse code if it was tapped directly on his skull. I'll hold off on telling Kiza for now, no telling what that hothead would do. I should tell the captain, though. Might finally pull him out of his daze, get him and poor Sergei out of the cabin. He's lucky the men are busy losing their own minds, or there'd be more judgment. Andrei's not a fan of what we're doing. Can't say I blame him, but it's too late. 18th April 82. Something is very wrong. I was not the Boynia I know. He's had bolts of the cloth peek out from under his uniform before, but mostly he kept his faith to himself. 
Not tonight. I would call it religious mania if he hadn't remained so damn calm. Even while beating Stukov half to death for taking a bite first, afterwards he stood and spoke about how we must purify ourselves knowing what we're about, what we did. 5th of April 82. Three straight days of bone broth is enough to make starvation appealing. Seems I'll get my wish soon enough though. No leftover corpses now. 6th April 82. Kiza knows. He's been hanging around Igorovich since I'm pointing himself to Chef's bodyguard. Must have heard the pipes, same as I did. Now he's stormed off to confront Boinya. He's got a temper like a volcano. When I tried to stop him, he turned around and asked if our positions were reversed, would Andre have stopped trying to save me? It's got a point. 28 April 82. I found Sergei uh, comforting Staz as he sobbed over a half butchered Kiza yesterday. I made a joke about seasoning. He did not appreciate it. 30th of April 82. Well, I got what I wanted. More a snarl than a sob, but it was an expression of emotion that wasn't religious zealotry. My plan backfired though. He locked himself in his cabin again. Bastard may have murdered Kiza, but he and his purifying path were the only things holding these animals back from indiscriminately ripping each other apart. Things are about to get very ugly, and the mirror isn't exactly our friend now. 12th of May, 82. That's it. We've reached the end game. The water recycler gasped its last. Sorry, boys. No amount of carnage will get you out of this one. At least I'll get to die in my little comms hidey hole. I'm quite fond of it up here. 6th May, 82. An unexpected laws of nature defying development. We are saved. By Boinya, no less. Although it wasn't his intention, he was probably hoping to be greeted by some biblical scourge when he opened the main hatch. Or at least the crushing embrace of deep sea currents. He wasn't expecting breathable air and potable water. His woeful howling was eloquent on this point. 19th May 82. Well, that's one mystery solved. He who doesn't take risks never drinks champagne. During my sojourn in comms, I had a crack at fixing the transmitter. I was successful, but something was causing interference and preventing me from even attempting to send a transmission. Turns out that it's these blue crystals sprouting up everywhere. They're phosphorescent, produce heat, and give me the heebie-jeebies, just like all the other local attractions. But now I know. 24th of May. Igorovich is savvier than I gave him credit for. He understands the deal. Got a good heart, which worries me. I'll have to keep an eye on him. 26th May. Found a perfect spot for the relay. There's a point at the furthest edge of our little grotto with no crystals. No crystals, no interference. Once I get it working, I'm not setting foot in that sub again. It was hellish before, but now it's just plain creepy and stinks of an abattoir. Butchering people. And you can hear Boinya's gibbering throughout the whole damn ship. 27 May. I'm broadcasting an honest to god SOS. No way to know if it can penetrate the huge pile of rocks between us and the surface, but at least it's going out. Who knows, maybe we won't die here after all. Maybe these men's last memories won't be of eating their friends. In big, I say. 31st May. That was hard to watch, even for me. The worst part, they didn't really want to kill poor Sergei. They were disgusted by his whimpering, by Igorovich's groveling, but I saw it in their faces, they were also ashamed. So Buenya had to do it. I didn't see him approach. He had Sergei on the altar, Konshirov's knife across his throat before anyone had a chance to move. And he was off again, leaving the men to deal with the aftermath of his inscrutable actions. Note to self, Dmitri, Alexei, and Kirill have left us without a goodbye. Second June. Craven bastard, I couldn't stand it. I went to confront Boinya about Sergei. He was just sitting there and mumbling to himself as always. He didn't acknowledge me, he didn't even seem to know I was there. So I decided to look around and found a loose wall panel. How did I not see it? He never ate with us, just read his interminable sermons. He hadn't left the Lima in weeks, but was healthy enough to heave all of Sergei's weight onto that altar. Rations. Pack upon pack, stuffed into that crawl space. Pathetic, hypocrite, traitorous swine, skulking, cursed thing. I'll put you out of your misery. 3rd of June. I was about to kill him, and when I grabbed his dirty, matted hair and looked into his eyes, I saw nothing. Nothing at all. Boinya has been dead for a while, his body just hasn't caught up yet. I didn't tell the man about the stash. His hold on their minds is disintegrating anyway. Best spare them the pain of betrayal. 5th of June. The things you can do with a bit of Russian know-how. Some pH... pH paper, a few pearls of our old friend's sodium hydroxide, an altruistic desire to get wasted, and bang, you've got alcohol. I'm gonna run a car on this hooch, but I don't think the man's palates are at peak performance. Let's have some fun. 6th of June. My reputation as a cold, feckless degenerate is not entirely undeserved, but there is a limit to any man's capacity for denial. It was all my fault. I pushed the captain to go deeper into the caves, ignoring Andrei. I gave him the idea to use Kamarov. 
let Kiza charge headlong into engineering, knowing the captain had stationed a guard there. On and on and on. At least I helped provide a night of laughter and mirth for the men. That counts for something. You poisoned them, didn't you? Gone. Everything and everyone is gone. Those things, whatever they were, laid waste to our Oceanside Sanatorium. Boinya stash rations are gone. The water is polluted with blood. The things dragged Boinya from the Lima as he screamed his head off about his last chance. No idea how they knew he was in there. Farewell, Corlia. Non-being is better than madness. I saw that Jude is complete. Should have made fewer jokes about using Staz's corpse as furniture these last days. Too much truth in those jokes now. Is he using Staz's corpse as furniture? <laughs> it's peaceful though, here by the water, next to my steadfast little transmitter. Jerry rigged the busted water recycler into a passable hydroelectric turbine. I reckon it will keep the batteries going for a couple of years, maybe more. Clever bit of engineering. I was hoping someone else will get the chance to appreciate it. Time to sleep. And I'm guessing he did not wake Makeshift tripod built from metal rods stands at the head of a grave mound. Right, there are lads in here. A few corpses, their legs and sleeves thickened with ancient dirt and muck lie as if collapsed into a deep, relieving sleep. An air of terminal camaraderie haunts their final slumber. One of these might be the, the guy. Body on a stretcher. Clothed skeletal form lies prostrate, absent flesh, given the appearance of uniforms several large sizes too large. Clusters of glowing lights emitted by fungal growths dance in tandem with shimmering luster spilling out from within the crystal. Poor sailors. Poor people. Their minds wouldn't be a part of the Nexus. It didn't exist then. Crystals. Mounds of luminous crystal have been collected and deposited here, the minerals persisting glow, serving as a makeshift nightlight. Makeshift grave marker of piping has partially collapsed a bloody navy cap caught on an errand. Okay, they all say that. Charlie Mac, is it a puzzle? No, Bear. It's a booby trap. Be careful with that. Interesting. It's a bear trap, and you're a bear. I... Every time. To the bear. Give him the arm. Maybe I can use the arm. The arm got floppier. I want to shake someone's hand with it. I use this to set off the trap. Air trap arm. Okay, and there we go. Eat. It's a sword, like old timey movies. things in them. Hello, I am Moses. <laughs> they were buried in their uniforms. I'm gonna guess it's the one that has the trap is the one who has the only actual item. Do that? Trick is, 
Breaking the chain off as close to the hilt as you can. Cool trick. The ornamental design doesn't look like it was meant for stabbing, more slicing, or piece picking. But as a kid, I had a dozen of these swinging from my jacket and leather pants, so I bet you did. Yes. We can give the chain. Dagger back to him, too. Alright. So we might be able to use. Maybe we can use the dagger to snip the. Uh... Snip the lines on the grenade. The interior of the worn pot is filled with blackened lumps and shards of human bone. The hammock is little more than a frayed web of threads, unlikely to hold any weight without disintegrating into woolly dust. Shame, is this what police use to catch bad guys? Hope when I saw a movie with knights and they had these things. Explode myself. <laughs> Great. Now it's got a grenade. <laughs> I hear something rattling inside when I shake it. Slow storm of kicked up dust goes around the ladder, carrying with it an odor of wet copper. Some steps are dented, the handle slightly bent, as if caught in a tussle. Hold there, spiders. I do not like it here. This is no place for children to play. More than that, it is a tomb. Letter to Yelena Igorovich from Stanislav, which chef. I am troubled. Comrade Captain ordered me to do a terrible thing, an act that would leave an indelible black mark upon my heart. Maybe the only way to stop this crew from tearing each other apart. Are 27 lives worth the price of my soul? These musings are mute. Are moot. I dare not refuse. And Gronk waits outside, listening to my pipes. I know that man is eccentric and dangerous. What a time to inspect my plumbing. Regardless, the path ahead leads deeper into the dark. I will need you in my heart, a beacon who's always stands. Yelena, I've begun my work. I hate to describe it as such, but I know not what else to call it. My burden? My shame? At least I helped Komarov get the last laugh. He'd always ask me to, to make Golup Golupsi. I'm sure he will enjoy forcing the man to eat boiled cabbage one last time. I thought it would just be Komarov. I thought we were giving him dignity, creating life in death, but it only led to more death, to a hunger for it. When the captain brought Kiza to me, he broke the seal. Goncharov has assembled a pack. They've been taking other crew members, delivering them to me fresh. Guard me at all times, so I am not free in my actions. The other survivors have been rounded up, tied in the next room. We have no refrigeration now. Every day I am sent in to peel another portion from one of them. They kept them alive. Each time they begged me to end us between their sobbed screams, the knife in my hand would be a final hope if I dared. I do not. I am weak. Forgive me, Lena. Being free from the Lima has been good for the men's psyches. They are mostly their old selves. Even the few prisoners left alive seem content to forget everything that happened mere hours ago. Don't know if I can do that. It weighs on me. Cannot sleep. The campsite is calm. Sergei freed himself from the captain's grip and remains with us now. There's no need for further violence, with all the dead left from those last hellish days. Water is plentiful, but I cannot. I've cured most of the meat. It will last for weeks now. That is as much as I can stand. 
Before, hunger would let me ignore my conscience, but now, as I try to sate this ache in my stomach, I see their faces and hear their screams. How has Gronk remained apart from it all? He never comes for the meat. Shadows are watching us. Captain was right. There are demons here. The Nochka, I am saved. I followed Gronk. He found edible algae growing around the crystals deeper in the cave he has agreed to share with me. I begged him to tell the crew, but he stared at me like I was a fool. To feed everyone, we would have to go deeper into the shadows. Both know that is not an option. There's something there, something more dangerous even than our disturbed comrade. My love, I think this will be my last letter to you. My wound festers, and Dimitri is not the most exemplary nurse, despite his protestations to the contrary. We bury those we could find, say there's a grave for all. At least in the end, the ocean will be a place of rest for them, rather than one of horror. I know you will never see these notes. All the, all the same, I love you, Stones. Cluster of conduits have been ravaged, wrenched aside, and pulled apart. A copious number of pipes are notably absent. Sheets of clammy cobwebs hang from walls and drape over furniture, captured clumps of dust and particulates to portray the netted presence. Charlie Mac, the pictures, these are useful. You're right, Mose. Those are escape suits. If any of them are left, you could use them to reach the surface. They would likely survive the water pressure outside. Moses, we need those suits. Do you understand? I will find them. I am a very smart bear now. I will aid him in his search. While I still have time. It makes my nose burn. Let's give that to Mac. The battery, absolutely ancient. We'll be lucky if this doesn't explode as soon as we plug it in, let alone the chances of it still working. Nice. Not sure how much juice we can squeeze out of this, but some is better than none. You can give me... You should probably give me the grenade. Absolutely archaic. Not sure it has enough power left in it, powder left in it to do much damage to anyone, but better safe than sorry. Dead meat has its uses. Better use of slim than one of my own, considering I only have one real one left. And I removed the bear trap. Arm shot from the bear trap. But this synthetic skin is something else. Open bear trap. Primed and ready to snap again at unwary feet. Synthetic skin. Skinning macarms is not something I saw myself doing anytime soon. Alright, what is stopping Mac from proceeding? He needs to fix this break. But he needs to also get this. He needs to get that wheel running. So what's stopping us? Oh yeah. Sick. 
can I... Troglodyte. <laughs> the man thing lies broken. Dark fluids running from a shattered cowl and burst body. Pallid rubber skin and inhuman digits twitch with evaporating ghost life. Another body. And. What? I don't think it's human. This is one of the native inhabitants of this place. And you are right. They are not human. Not anymore. Faran. Still with us, are you? To the end, I think. Hmm. A titanic cog labors upon the wall, the rumbling toil of its radial spokes vibrating throughout the chamber like perpetual thunder. The grinding wheel dislodged. Gotta disconnect the main wheel from the milling stone. Somehow. Wood piece got jammed in the rivets. Can you get it out? No. Tension from the wheels got it wedged. Only way, maybe, would be to cut it. No? Okay. <laughs> I don't think that's strong enough. Okay. Um, Charlie still needs fire. We're waiting on that. We have the battery for Moses. Let's see if he can do anything with it. Okay, I think I need to block this. Maybe? It's Rumbles. The bear got the hydraulics going. Good job, Mose. Search the sub. You have to find those suits. My Charlie. Okay. I think this is probably a good place to call us. Oh, yeah, I think we'll call it here. Day, anyway. Right. That's it for me for this evening uh, for Foley Fables tomorrow um, as a celebration, if you like, of my affiliate anniversary. Um, we're going to play the original Alone in the Dark, which, if you're not familiar, is a game that runs off DOS from 1992 it is extremely clunky but it is one of the very very first survival horror games um the newest reboot as there have been quite a few reboots of alone in the dark they never quite managed to get it right and judging by the reviews they still haven't quite managed it but whatever um the newest one is out today maybe might be today might be tomorrow i'm not sure um i think it's later today anyway It'll be out at some point. Um, but I'm not quite ready to start a Let's Play of that just yet. I am planning to do a Let's Play of the new one. Um, so until then, we're going to attempt to play the original. I make no promises that we will finish it in any way, because the brief amount of time I spent playing it to make sure you no know, OBS could capture it and so on. Oh my god, is it clunky. Jesus Christ. So I don't know how long I'll put up with it for. Um, in the case that I can honestly just cannot handle it, uh, I do have the 2008 version uh, of that reboot of Alone in the Dark. I have not tested that to see if it works yet, though, so we will have to see. 
It may or may not. Uh, and if it doesn't... I don't know. More stasis bomb tomorrow, I guess. <laughs> Hopefully one of those will work. Or, I don't know. Maybe I can do part one of Alone in the Dark and uh, come back to part two after either one of the many games I have ongoing right now is finished. Anyway, thank you for keeping me company for this evening, if you did. Um, if you want to catch up on previous versions of Stasis Bone Totem or uh, Banishers Goes to New Eden that I'm currently playing through or Master Detective Archive's Rain Code that I'm currently playing through, um, as well as all of the other Let's Plays I have done, uh, you can find all of the VODs over on YouTube, uh, youtube.com slash doomtrain5. If you're watching on YouTube, you can watch live on over on Twitch at twitch.tv slash doomtrain5. Um, anyway, hopefully I will see you tomorrow uh, for Alone in the Dark, or Alone in the Dark, or Alone in the Dark. <laughs> so it'll be, it'll be one of the many Alones in the Darks. If you think it's like Attorney General's? Attorney's General? It's, it's Alones in the Dark? You have multiple Alone in the Dark? That doesn't make sense. We wouldn't be alone then. Anyway, moving on. Uh, I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> right. Have a good evening. Bye-bye. Mm. Mm-hmm.